Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, take a look at the headlines first. Microsoft released a report about the use of artificial intelligence to disrupt elections. Right against adverse effects of climate change, part of right to life and equality, says Supreme Court. Scientists discover the reason behind cleanest air in the Southern Ocean region. As per a report by Amphi Crystal, 98% of urban women involved in household financial decisions. Land portions from 10 cantonment boards to be merged with concerned state local bodies. Gulf Cooperation Council has launched its vision for regional security. In the very first news, Microsoft released a report about the use of artificial intelligence to disrupt elections. Starting off, let's take a look at the key observations made. It noted that China had attempted an AI-generated disinformation campaign in the Taiwan presidential election. The methods used were AI-generated audio, anchors, memes and AI-enhanced videos to influence various aspects of the elections. This surely directs our focus around the threats of the use of AI in elections. One direct impact will be the manipulation of electoral behaviour. Political advertisements can be made deceptive and with false content, AI is capable of making them individual specific. It will stir misleading public opinion regarding candidate statements, stances on various issues and even the authenticity of certain events. AI will make it easier to create and disseminate fake news. It will also result in cyber security threats that can be used to target election infrastructure, voter databases and other critical systems. Lastly, foreign influence could increase the scale and persuasiveness of foreign countries. Moving further, it's necessary to note the steps required to reduce the threat of AI in election. The Election Commission of India may consider roping in outside experts with a deep understanding of the latest AI technologies. The government may bring regulations that require transparency in the use of AI for political purposes. And also, technological companies should place measures to stop misinformation like MetaFact checking helpline in India. Lastly, the government can enhance public awareness about deceptive AI. In another news, right against adverse effects of climate change, part of right to life and equality, says Supreme Court. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court was hearing an application for modification by the Union Ministries of Environment, Power, Renewable Energy against an order issued by Supreme Court in April 2021. The April 2021 order of the Supreme Court imposed restrictions on setting up of overhead transmission lines in certain areas of Rajasthan for conservation of Great Indian Bustard. Now let's take a look at the key highlights of the Supreme Court judgment. Article 14, Right to Equality and Article 21, Right to Life and Personal Liberty are important sources of right to a clean environment and right against adverse effects of climate change. It noted the inability of underserved communities to adapt to climate change or cope with its effects violates the rights granted under Article 14 and 21. For example, food and water shortages due to climate change and environmental degradation affects poorer communities more, affecting right to equality. Moving further, following are some constitutional provisions related to environment. Article 48A mentions that states shall endeavour to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife. Article 51A Clause G mentions that it is a duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Reflecting on the news, here are some important Supreme Court judgments regarding constitutionalization of environmental problems. M.C. Mehta v. Kamal Nath, 1996, which stated, any disturbance of basic environmental elements, namely air, water and soil, would be hazardous to life within meaning of Article 21. Virendra Gaur v. State of Haryana, 1994, which stated, right to clean environment is an integral facet of right to a healthy life. In the next news, scientists discover the reason behind the cleanest air in the Southern Ocean region. To begin with, let's understand more about Southern Ocean, also known as the Antarctic Ocean. It is geologically the youngest of the world's oceans, dominated by the clockwise circulating Antarctic circumpolar current. It is known for its strong winds, intense storms, dramatic seasonal changes and cold temperatures. Delving further into the news, clean air refers to the low levels of aerosols in the atmosphere. Aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air. 
Now, what might be the possible reasons for the low level of aerosols in Southern Ocean region? First and foremost, the reduced human activity in the region. It results in minimal emissions and fossil fuel usage. Another reason is the few phytoplankton that are a source of airborne sulfate particles in winter, resulting in fewer sulfate particles during winter. Clouds and rain also play a vital role, as the honeycomb structured clouds affects the region's climate. Open honeycomb clouds allow sunlight to pass and tend to produce more intense, sporadic rainfall, which washes the aerosols out. These clouds are more common in the winter, whereas closed honeycomb clouds reflect sunlight, leading to low rainfall and thus less effective at removing aerosols. Moving ahead in the news. As per a report by Amphi Crystal, 98% of urban women involved in household financial decisions. A new report from Amphi Crystal titled Mutual Growth sheds light on the rising financial decision-making power and labor force participation of women in India. The key findings of the report are quite remarkable. Female labor force participation rate has risen to 41.5% as of October 2023, up from just 24.6% five years ago. Nearly half of the women surveyed, 47%, said they take financial decisions on their own. The level of autonomy depends on factors like income source, age and stage of affluence. This increased role of women in financial decision making carries substantial social and economic implications. On the social front, it can lead to women's overall empowerment, addressing gender disparities, reducing domestic violence and conflict. It also has an intergenerational impact with resources more likely to be allocated towards children's education and health care. Economically, it means greater financial literacy and inclusion, better financial planning and wealth management for families and communities. It can also drive entrepreneurship, innovation, increased financial intermediation and market depth. However, the report also highlights some key challenges that persist in achieving women's financial autonomy. Socio-cultural factors like deep-rooted patriarchy and gender stereotypes continue to limit women's financial independence. Economic disparities such as lower formal workforce participation, the persistent gender pay gap and the dual burden of unpaid domestic and care work undertaken by women pose significant hurdles. At last, now let's have a look at the steps taken for women's financial autonomy. Initiatives like the PM Jandhan Yojana, Beti Bachao Beti Parhao, Self-Help Group Promotion by NABAD, and Entrepreneurial Support Schemes like Stand Up India and Mudra Yojana are steps in the right direction. In our next news, land portions for 10 cantonment boats to be merged with concerned state local bodies. For those who may not be familiar with the term, cantonments are areas where military troops are garrisoned and primarily dedicated to housing soldiers, though civilian populations are also present. The genesis of cantonments in India dates back to the East India Company era after the Battle of Plassey in 1757. Barakpo, near Calcutta, was the first cantonment established in 1765. Currently, there are 61 cantonments across the country, with six of them established after independence. In terms of administration, local self-governments of cantonments are subject matter of union government under entry 3 of the union list governed by the Cantonments Act of 2006 in accordance with the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. The cantonments are administered by cantonment boards, which perform civic duties such as providing public health, water supply and primary education. It comes under administrative control of the Ministry of Defence. Cantonment's station commander is the board's ex officio president. These boards are classified into four categories based on their population size, with category 1 having a population of more than 50,000, category 2 having population between 10,000 to 50,000, category 3 with population between 2,500 to 10,000, and category 4 having a population of less than 2,500. Now as part of this decision, the military areas within these 10 cantonments will be converted into exclusive military stations under complete army control. This move is expected to help the defense forces focus on strengthening their security, simplifying their land management and preventing encroachments. Additionally, the civilian population living in these cantonments will now get access to more welfare schemes of their respective state governments. This decision is also anticipated to reduce the strain on the annual defense budget, allowing for better allocation of resources. Moving on to the next news. Gulf Cooperation Council has launched its vision for regional security. Before proceeding, let's first know what is Gulf Cooperation Council. The Gulf Cooperation Council was established in 1981, 
comprising six Gulf states that are UAE, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar and Kuwait. The Council holds the objectives to have coordination, integration and interconnection between member states in all fields. If we talk about its organizational structure, then it includes the Supreme Council, composed of the head of the states, is the highest authority, and the Ministerial Council, consisting of foreign ministers. Coming back to the news, the vision, adopted in December 2023, proposes a comprehensive framework of regional security which promotes negotiation and dialogue to overcome disagreements, violence and conflict. The vision has shed light on various aspects. Let's have a look at its key highlights. Firstly, it is based on the principles of shared destiny and indivisible security of the member states and any threat to one is a threat to all. Also, it emphasizes joint efforts to avoid use of force and prioritize dialogue and negotiation to resolve their differences. It urges member states to combat terrorism, extremism and money laundering. It also urges member states to support international and regional efforts on non-proliferation and make the region free of weapons of mass destruction. Moreover, there is a great emphasis on activating Arab Peace Initiative to reach a just resolution of Palestinian cause in accordance with the two-state solution. Additionally, climate change, water and food security, energy security, defending economic resources and creating investment opportunities have also been prioritized. The vision for regional security holds a huge significance as well as it represents a call to action for all parties to collaborate towards a secure and prosperous future. Also, it offers an opportunity to member states to resolve historical regional conflicts such as Palestinian problem and more. The place in news for today is Ecuador with its capital Quito. It is in the news as recently Mexico suspended diplomatic ties with Ecuador after a police raid on the Mexican embassy in Quito. If we talk about its political features, Ecuador is a country located in northwestern South America, bounded by Colombia to the north. Peru to the east and south and the Pacific Ocean to the west. Galapagos Islands, west of the mainland of Ecuador, are part of Ecuador. Geographically, the equator passes through Ecuador. The Andes mountain range runs through it with major rivers like Amazon, Guyas and Putumayo crisscrossing the landscape. It also has several active volcanoes including Cotopaxi and Tungurua and Mount Chimborazo being its highest peak. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. India has secured the right to operate its second overseas port after Chabahar in Iran, Sithwe, after approval by the Ministry of External Affairs. Sithwe port is a deep water port located at the estuary of Kaladan River in Rakhine state of Myanmar. Enrollment under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana in financial year 2023-24 saw an increase of 27% as compared to previous financial year. This Yojana was launched in 2016. It is a central sector scheme conceptualized and administered by the central government and implemented by concerned state or union territory governments. Scientists have discovered the sudden reversal in the direction of the Arctic polar vortex spin. Sudden stratospheric warming events which caused more ozone from lower latitudes to move around the Arctic could have led to the change in the direction. Center has recently issued a draft notification demarcating an eco-sensitive zone around Sukhna Wildlife Sanctuary. Eco-sensitive zones are ecologically important and fragile areas around protected areas. They are notified by the central government under the Environment Protection Act 1986. The state of Jharkhand is taking many steps for the restoration and conservation of River Damodar. Damodar River originates in Khamarpath Hill on Chota Nagpur Plateau in Palamau district of Jharkhand. It is a sub-basin and part of the Ganges River system. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Island, formerly Ross Island, is facing an evasion of Chittal deer. Chittal are mainly found in Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka, up to the geographical barrier of the Himalayas. They are native to the Indian subcontinent, their IUCN status is least concern. A study by IIT Madras reveals the pervasive presence of PFAS, also known as Forever Chemicals, in Bunkingham Canal, Adya River and Chimbarabakkam Lake. PFAS are a vast family of synthetic chemicals found in everyday products such as non-stick cookware, upholstery, food packaging, water or stain-resistant coatings and industrial materials. The events of climate change have disrupted the normal life of the Changpa tribe. Changpa tribe are a semi-nomadic tribes of Tibetan origin living in the plains of eastern Ladakh. They profess Tibetan Buddhism and live in conical yak skin tents called Rebo.
Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the link in the description below.